Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of No Way Jose, starring the Boston Mass himself, Jose Raymond, and brought to you by his website, www.thebostonmass.com. Of course, the YouTube channel, The Boston Mass. Follow him on Instagram at, at the, T-H-E-E, Boston Mass, all the way from Massachusetts. Jose Raymond, how are you, Jose? I'm doing well, Ron. How are you? Yeah, uh, doing well. You know, um, we have to talk about John Meadows first because um, this impacted so many people. So many people knew John. He kept in, t he was friendly to everybody. He was helpful to everybody he met. Everybody who ever met him and talked to him remembers him as this really cool guy who, you know, would give you the shirt off his back and gave out so much free information, advice. Um, just, just a, just a warm, genuine guy. So down to earth, so intelligent. Um, I, I don't think I've met too many people, not just in the industry, but in general in my life that were quite like that, this positive aura about him. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, um, more than the bodybuilding accolades and his knowledge and his, um, you know, his brain, yeah. it was, I don't think I've ever met anyone that not a single person on earth had a bad thing to say about him. I was I mean, even, that. even the nicest, greatest people I know, there's always someone that don't like them. I, I, I've, I've never met John, uh, someone that didn't like John. Right. I mean, not only didn't like him, but didn't put him up on a pedestal, you know, um, yeah. he certainly, you know, I, I'm, I've been at a loss for words, this, this whole like experience, you know, my phone has been blowing up. You and I spoke immediately as soon as we found out, or we hadn't even found out yet. We're like, is this real? Uh, well, is this was, no way. We're like, we're like so hoping that was, it was false, false yeah. intel. Yeah, uh, and then sure enough, you know, unfortunately, it, it is um and you know the bodybuilding world people are going to spin this a million different ways yeah um but he, he had health issues that, that he was fighting you know from what was that a year and a half ago it wasn't that long ago well there was even yeah the heart attack was last spring i think and then he had that issue with his with colitis or he had to get most of his colon yeah taken yeah out. I'm not sure they're related, but no, I don't think they are. But I mean, the guy's been, he had some major things happening with him, unfortunately. Yeah. And they were just bad luck things. It wasn't the way people will try to spin it or portray it, you know, gear, this, that. But I mean, yeah. Yeah. From I mean, what, from what I'm understanding, and I, and, and by, I by no means have the inside scoop, but I, 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 I think it is the same thing that happened a year ago. Uh, oh, okay. Unfortunately, he was asleep. When this one happened, um, so I'm hearing pulmonary embolism. Yeah, that's but that's like a blood clot in the lungs. It so goes would, to the heart. Yeah, but I mean, it would be different. Is would that cause a heart attack? Sure, sure. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, why would they put cause of death as pulmonary embolism instead of cardiac arrest or whatever? You well, know, I haven't seen I haven't seen a cause of death yet. I don't, I, I don't think there is one. I mean, it, that, that's like the most minor, insignificant part of all this. Uh, right. It's like you said, when it's rare that I don't know too many people. Maybe I can count them on one hand that I've never heard anything negative said about because we've all been assholes at one time or another mm -hmm. in whatever situation, for whatever reason. I know I have, you, you know, it's just human I'm nature. Professional. Yeah, we're, you know, we're moody. <laughs> we're moody sons of bitches. And we get into our little moods but anyway yeah he he uh he was just such a good person it wasn't just that he was a brilliant and he gave away so much free knowledge i mean he had a pay website but he also had a youtube channel with so much free content like it was always stuff you could use like 20 things you're doing wrong with your biceps training or it was something you could watch that video and immediately go to the gym and start working on whatever you wanted to work on thanks to him just yeah. that's just this one tiny example but man, yeah, now I, I'm just curious, how did you meet him? When was the first time you remember meeting John? Oh man, probably I believe at one of the Masters Nationals mm -hmm. um, through the years or, or Team Universe. Right. Um, you know, I had heard of him prior, you know, who's this guy? This guy was a tank. Yeah. He was just known as, because I mean, he's not much taller than me. He's probably five, six. 
Yeah, and, yeah, about and uh, he was competing at one time at like two thirty or something, yeah. and he wasn't that. Right. No. So yeah. he, he was pretty nuts. Um, but then you know you, you see this guy and you think of a monster, and he was anything but. You know, mm. he was mm. the most soft-spoken, you know, polite, gentle true, true. guy you'd ever meet. He, he, he's one of those guys. Honestly, like if you don't have something good to say, you don't say it. Mm. And he, he ne- you know, he lived by that. I, I never heard him say a bad word. Yeah. Um, he didn't have time for that. Right. Uh, but yeah, he was just always very nice, complimentary to me. Um, I, I want to say the, the last time I saw him in person was at the, um, the Carbon Culture Grand Opening. Right, right. Yeah, Murfreesboro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was there. I, I had just seen him at Chicago Pro and I was like passing because I was in a rush and I was like, oh, I'll talk to him later. And I never talked to him later. And yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I remember uh, the years he did Universe. He, it took him a long time to turn pro. He was one of those guys that wouldn't give up. And th- another thing, our friend Matt, we're talking about uh, Matt Puglia. Uh, they would talk all the time, but it was rarely about bodybuilding. It was about they both coached their kids' football teams. Yeah. And they would, like, share strategies and, you know, talk about the last game. And, you know, he loved his kids. And, he, he I mean, that's a big commitment, coaching kids' football or any, any sport, really. Uh, yeah. On top of doing what he did, I mean, he was coaching people. He was making video content every day. He was an educator. He really was one of the best educators of this generation. I bet yeah. more people learned how to train better, eat better, you know, more effectively, more efficiently from John's videos uh, and and articles he wrote too than pretty much anybody else of this of this particular era we're in right now. I think he started competing in the early '80s. Yeah. I want to say 84 or something stupid like that. Did he, did he start then, when he was like 16? Super yeah. Young? Something like yeah. that. Yeah. And then didn't turn pro until 2015. Right, right. <laughs> so it's just, yeah. I mean, he that's had... That's a lesson in persistence. Not only that, it's just not many people who took that long to turn pro and didn't... He didn't make a huge impact as a 212 bodybuilder. He, he didn't do that many shows. But he had a look that... You know, people would would save pictures of him for motivation. He just had this dense, grainy, thick look that you, you don't even see on a lot of pros. Rarely do they have that right. kind of muscle maturity and detail. He would be like very elite in that department for the pros. And he was looking like that as an amateur for years. Right. Yeah. I mean, talk about. It, yeah. And he underwent that, that um, those medical procedures in his in his um, intestines. Right. And yeah. he still made it back out on, on stage yeah. in, in turn pro. <laughs> yeah, he had a, what do you call a colostomy bag he had to wear for at one point for a while, you know, yeah. from, from one surgery to the next, you have to wear a bag or maybe some people have to wear it forever. But yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah he when, certainly lived a great life, yeah. touched um, many, 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 many people. I mean, if, if, if you want to say uh, a model to how to live a life, he lived it you know he he touched as many people and affected as many people as anyone and and and, you know that that's that's what it's all about i guess right yeah i mean if you they always say you know you should strive to leave a legacy behind you know be remembered for hopefully doing making the world a better place while you are while you're alive and he's yeah yeah he's he's leaving uh wow so many so many people their lives were improved in one way or another thanks to John and him taking the time and being the person that he was. So oh, scroll through, scroll through uh, your Instagram right now. I mean, that's all you, Oh, that's okay. all you see. Oh, it's I know. Crazy. Yeah. But you know, it, he was, he was worthy of it. He was, uh, he was one of the ones, he had so many more years left to do what he was doing, but he was already a legend. I mean, yeah. he, he achieved legendary status a while ago for, everything that he's done in the sport in the industry supplement. He started a supplement company. Jeez. Uh, member website, coach turned pro himself. I mean, so many, so many people, so many, yeah, look at how many people do you follow? I follow probably uh, 15,000, 20,000 people, something ridiculous. And my feed, I, every, every third or fourth at the most 
picture is either John by himself or John with the, the person with the account. Right. Yeah. Was, yeah. So rest in peace, John. Um, yeah, this you will never be forgotten. You're gonna live on. So many people will carry that man in their hearts forever. Because he was he was that type of guy. No yeah. doubt. So all right, now uh, we need to transition to some contest coverage, some opinions, because uh, uh, I was there and people had a lot of differing opi opinions on some of these decisions. Not too many, but uh, I want to get your take because I know you will. Uh, you'll tell it like it is no matter who's going to love you, who's going to hate you. Uh, I love it. So uh, let's just start with the big with the big one. The big argument was Phil Clayhar or Ian Valier for the win. What did you see as far as that battle? Who had what? Who didn't have what? Okay, to be fair, I was not there. Right. So I was not in person. From the photos I saw, I would have absolutely no problem with Klahar winning. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And, uh, you know, that's not a, a, a bash on Ian either because Ian was awesome. Yeah. Um, just Phil had crystal clear separation striation diff detail i um, mean you know, it could be because they're photographs and he's a lot darker than he you know yeah, um yeah. that could be one thing he uh, you know particularly his back his rear lat spread his rear double were um unbelievable and, and i don't know if i'm just so excited at how much he improved mm. uh, or if he was literally that good i think he was that good mm. and when it's that close there were two things, I've already said this before, that were glaring to me, were some awkward poses from Ian. Um, and, and that was like, if I was deciding and I thought it was so close, yeah. it was enough that I kind of leaned towards Klahar, hmm. where the rear double bicep and the front double bicep of Ian was, he was kind of like this, yeah. instead of like up and open. Right. It was weird. And, and Phil, then, Phil then, looks like a freaking jet plane when he does that pose. Right, know? right. Yeah. And from behind, um, Ian wasn't opening up his back. He was pinching down like that right. the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know how guys come down and they pinch and then open it? Yeah. He stayed pinched like that. And I don't know if they just caught him like that, but oh. every rear double by pitcher I was seeing was him pinched like that. I have to go look at the pictures now. I'm not even sure myself. I think you would notice it. Um, yeah. So, but again, I wasn't there. So there may have been hamstring detail, glute detail. I know his waist, Ian's waist was the best in the lineup. Hmm. You know, he had the, the, the taper from shoulder to waist, tiny hips, great control of his midsection. And that would be the only knock I would have on Klahar was um, his midsection. Although it wasn't terrible, it was a little um, distended, tiny, tiny bit, right. especially when you're standing next to Ian, whose midsection is spectacular. Yeah. So, you know, I, again, that's why I said I wouldn't have a problem either way. Mm. I'm very happy for Ian. You know, I'm a huge fan of his. And yeah. uh, out of all training, I, I really only like seeing him and, and, and Nick Walker, as I told you. Those are the guys that I love their intensity and their consistency. And, and uh, I've been saying, Ian, you know, th that I, I'm on the Ian bandwagon for sure. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see a few corrections. And, and um, I think it's a good thing that there are some things that he can get better at. Yeah. Be because um, th that just shows me that kid is still on the rise and he's going to continue to get better. And when he does, um, he's he's special. He's good. He's got it all. He's got structure, and that's you know first and foremost the most important thing with those big guys. Yeah. And, and I think that he can stand. It wouldn't surprise me if he's in the first call out at the Olympia. No, I I think he's definitely got a great chance. Top seventh place last year. It's not inconceivable he's going to move up one two shots slots. Yeah. Um, so the other thing everyone was. Not a, the other big topic right after the show ended was Max Charles. Max got screwed. Max should have won. Can can you make an argument for Max winning? No, no, I I don't think he got screwed. Um, now you could argue he could have been third, um, but 
In fact, I probably would have argued he got third. Oh, I'm sorry. Again, he was fourth. I, I, I messed up. He was fourth. Yeah, yeah so. I know. That, that's why I said I, I could yeah. have argued him being third, definitely. Yeah. I don't think he was – he's just not as pretty as Phil Klahar, the way he's put together. Um, Phil has those nice, long, low-inserting lats, yeah. and that's, that's uh, Max's weak point is he's got high lats. Yes. Um, he, again, his legs have improved tremendously from all angles. Um, his condition from the front, from his upper body was nuts. Um, there's just a few shots that are, are you know, you, you can't give away shots when it's that close. Yeah. And there's a few that he gives away and, and just structurally, he was beat by structurally superior guys. And that's why I say I wouldn't have a problem with him being third because he's structurally superior to Charles Griffith. Hmm. Who, you know who has a really short torso right. and um you know you pack on that much muscle on that short torso it starts to look a little strange you know um hmm. he's got as much money uh, uh, muscle as anyone it's kind of like uh william bonac you know but not as round yet i think I, I referred to him and i i think had my cox did too as a a taller william bonac there's a lot of similarities in their in their physique yeah but William's legs are gigantic. So, yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. But, but, but um, um, Charles Griffin's legs have gotten better. Yeah. He could have been sharper from behind, from what I was seeing, the glutes and hamstrings. Yeah. And, you know, you hate to constantly glutes, glutes, glutes. But when you're comparing to the top three in a show, that it matters. I'm sorry. It just yeah. does. So structure matters. Conditioning matters. And presentation matters. So. All those things are where I'm getting nitpicky, you know. Um, I think, sure, again, the right person won. I would have no problem with Klahar winning, yeah. and I would have had no problem with Max being third. Right, right. Yeah, I was, I was going back and forth after judging. I thought, I didn't know if Phil should be runner-up or gripping. I think I was getting really, uh, I was really wowed by the freak factor because Griffin is just, Certain shots, like a side chest, his freaking arm is, oh, looks like yeah, size crazy. of his head. He's a freak. He's got a freaky amount of muscle on him. So, really but, dense. But you're right. Shit, Phil. Certain shots Phil hit, I was like, wow, like his front double is better than Ian's front double. Yeah. Um, I have no problem with giving that shot to him. Just It's just a, a more uh, proportionately superior structure. Yeah. That's all. Um, so last, go ahead. Answer me this. Yeah. What was wrong with Shaban? Because... From pitchers I saw, I would have, I mean, I think he's structurally better than Charles Griffin and he's bigger, yeah. uh, equally as big, if not bigger, maybe not the arms, but everything else uh, is, is pretty damn close. Uh, how did he end up out of the mix there? Uh, I'm guessing because what I was trying to figure out how, how they're going to be placed, how they should be placed. He, certain shots, I don't see much muscle separation. Uh, yeah. Like the side chest, I wanted to see, you know, some guys have the, the brachialis. You can see everything, like the, the separation is that deep. Yeah. Um, he didn't have that much going on with separation in certain areas of his upper body. His lower, which is crazy because his quads were very cleanly separated. They were, in, they looked like they were nice and dry and right on. Usually it's the other way around. Usually the guy's upper bodies, or maybe, you know, they're, they're sharper than the legs. But yeah, yeah I, I would have had... No disrespect to Max. I would have had no problem, really, with Shaban ahead of him, although I, I, I agree with the judge's decision. But, you know, sometimes these guys are both so good and they're, they're different from each other. Yeah. So what do you do? You know, we sound like a broken record, like, oh, uh, I agree with the judges, but I wouldn't have had a problem with this. Yeah. It's not like we're kissing any judge's ass. It, it's, it's, it's just a fact. It's like I can see why so-and-so beat him, but... I would have no problem had it been the other way around. Yeah. See, the yeah. problem is, is, as a judge, they have to make a decision. We don't. We could right. say, well, this guy's good. They can't. They have to, and they got to do it fast. I mean, yeah. whew, they had some good snacks at the show. They had some, uh, I think Shaban is running into a problem of, like, finding that perfect balance of fullness and condition. Because yeah. he's probably too full at this show. And it took away some of that detail you're talking about. Yeah. Took away some of that separation. And if he comes in too dry, he loses that 
that wow factor of the the crazy roundness right so uh he's got i don't know how old he is how do you know how old he is uh, late I, I, um, late 20s? I would say like 30 maybe late 20s i don't, I don't know he, he looks he doesn't have any wrinkles or anything so he's probably pretty young <laughs> Well, he made a gigantic leap in the last few years. So I'm 30, guessing, he said 30 pounds since 20, 2019. 19. Yeah. yeah, that's ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> so he, he can't be that old if his body's changing that much. That's true. That's true. Yeah, probably late 20s. So it's a young muscle. It's new muscle. So it's very easy for it to glaze over when he's too full. Mm. And it's very easy to flatten out when he's too, too depleted. He loves calls it baby muscle. Yeah, yeah, it's real. Uh, let's talk about 212. This is a guy, well-earned first pro win, Bethel, Connecticut's own, Kareth Bajo. Yeah, this yes. guy's, he hasn't really done that many shows. He's really starting to compete more often. I think, like you said, he'd only done like five pro shows before this, these last couple. Is that right? Yeah, I doubt it's even that, because mm. the only one I remembered was third in New York. Yeah. And uh, he turned pro not too long prior to that. Okay. Yeah. I think you told me 2017, the team universe. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he beat some big names. He beat some heavy favorites. In my predictions, I I had Bo Lewis winning. I thought John Jewett was going to push him hard. I knew Kareth was going to push him hard, too, because I had just seen him. And uh, Ahmad El Sadani. I mean, that's the top four were incredible. They were all amazing in their own ways. yeah, Kareth, that's the best. I've only seen him now. This is only second. No, he told me I had seen him before, but I did not mem- remember him at all. Whatever show he was, <laughs> like, he was probably like 15th or something. Anyway, um, Bo, Bo should have, this was Bo's show to win or lose. What and happened? I, I don't know. I never asked him, you know, it, I, I'm a, I was getting pictures from him every couple of days, last, last like three weeks, and he was getting tighter and tighter and dry. Everything was coming in right on time. And then, the way he looked in the last set of pictures that he sent me was probably 30% better than what I saw on stage two days later, three days later. So I don't know, something, something with the final, the final peaking process went, um, went awry, like, is my guess. I think he was unsure as to what he wanted to do because hmm. at some point, and I don't know if he was dicking around. I think he was. Or, or if he was serious, but he was saying he was doing open. Right, yeah. He was, and, he was fucking around. He was fucking with people. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, he looked good. He looked pretty much like what we've seen, maybe just not as dry. Yeah. He looked big. He looked shapely. He's got a great shape. He's big everywhere, literally. And, and um, I, I didn't see, you know, that's why it sucks that I wasn't there, because in person, you can see within seconds. Right. what's wrong and what's going on well i could tell you because i was at new york pro when he won last year and he was drier for that show he's put on a little bit more muscle so if he had been drier i don't you know i don't think he would have uh i think kareth would have had a real problem on his hands if bo had been yeah. really dry and conditioned i don't know if kareth could have could have had him at this show yeah kareth is significantly shorter than him probably yes. three or four inches or something right but he's densely packed i mean he's definitely the most dense guy on stage yeah and but but when when uh bo is a hundred percent you know he's got the tiny waist and the roundness to everything that it's just really hard to beat and he's really structurally sound he's he's taller than than a lot of the guys so he just stands out yeah you know, with a pretty physique that's big in condition, that's hard to beat. Yeah. But I mean, because he wasn't a hundred percent, you know, Kareth made him look soft. Right. Right. You know, comparatively, and, and then uh, El Sadani was unbelievable. He's getting better every show. Yeah. And you probably could have flipped a coin with that, and, and people wouldn't have been too disappointed. The thing with Kareth that really stands out is his quads come from his hips. They come out and just make, yeah. it gives him a beautiful shape. Yeah. And it, it really changes the way things happen. Because with El Sadani, he's got leg, great legs. They've come up a lot. Yeah. But it seems like the thickness of them starts lower in the quad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, don't, they don't come off the hip. Mm-hmm. So 
it looks like there's a big space in the middle of his body right. compared to Karen. Yeah. Um, you know, now, now also down, he's wider, he's taller. Um, you could argue like the separation might be even better, mm -hmm. but the hardness and the density and the roundness goes to Carrick and, and, you know, he nailed it. He nailed it. He did everything he had to, to do to win that. Yeah. You know who he reminds me of is uh, Sean Clarita. I see a lot of similarities in the physiques. Yeah. Giant Clarita. Yeah. <laughs> he's a, yeah. uh, but he's got to be four and three, four inches taller. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I could see Kareth, uh I think he's on the rise. I think it's it's his time is now. Yeah, he's coming up. I'm, I'm glad to see it. He's the nicest guy. Only met I think him. he'll move up. I think he'll be a guy in that first call out at the at the Olympia. Yeah. Oh, I I think he's more than capable of being in there. John Jewett. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. He I, I thought he looked damn good. It's just, it was a this was a tough two twelve class. Do you, yeah. Do you, I mean. It, do you think John could have done anything anything differently? Looked no. any, any better? Just like I said the last time, no. Hmm. There's nothing he can do. He's getting beat by people that are superior in structure and muscle roundness. Nobody's harder than him. Right. Nobody works harder than him. Nobody's um, in better condition or has better separation. Or It's just he comes, one, the shape of his muscles again, uh, aren't like carrots, like round, you know, his legs are kind of longish looking. Yeah. They're great legs, but they mm. don't have the round, round, round look like a Shaban or, or like carrot. Um, it, it's just, man. And it, even though he, he's like, he has a vacuum and it, and it looks good. He doesn't have a crazy taper. I don't think he has the smallest hips you know mm -hmm. he has a tight waist but he doesn't have small hips right so it's just structurally slightly off and it's like man he's got to just keep showing up yeah i mean he's got enough points he's, he's going to olympia um so he's all good did you ask him if he's gonna go no matter what or yeah yeah he's going because it's <clears throat> Because uh, his wife, she qualified, Renee Jewett. She won the wellness. Yeah, I saw so she, that. She's going to the Olympia. I think it was top two <clears throat> from wellness and from women's body building. We're going to the Olympia. But John, yeah, John by himself, it's just wow. It's, it's, he looks amazing. He still looks mm -hmm. amazing, but when he's next to uh, a guy who's so much thicker like Kareth uh, or Bo, it's, uh, it's tough. It's tough. because, And I, I'm a conditioning snob. I, I want everyone to be freaking shredded and diced to the bone because why, yeah. why, why wouldn't you be? This is what you do for a living. But uh, Put it man. this way. If Rami had John's condition oh my God. <laughs> the last seven years, he'd probably be a seven-time Mr. Olympia by now. He would win 10 if he had that. If he yeah. Had all that and that detail. Oh, my God. Yeah. <sighs> that's, that's, you know, John, take your hat off to, to John. He's, yeah. he's awesome. Nice guy, nicest guy, smart, you know, and we were talking about John. This is someone else who I've seen him interact with people and he's, he's just so, so giving and so helpful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and that's all part of it. You know, keep showing up. Don't yeah. change a thing. Don't just keep being who he is. He's going to win a show and the yeah. whole bodybuilding world will rejoice. You know, yeah. I mean, he it's won, um, he won Chicago, I think a couple of years ago. Did he? Yeah. yeah, he's got one win. He's got one win. Oh, yeah, yeah. He went to the Olympia twice already, so. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he was fourth his first year at the Olympia. Which which automatically um, qualified him for the next year. Right, right. Oh, so that's so why he did. It might be a few years since he won a show. Yeah, I think it has been. I think it's been a couple of years. Uh, fifth place, young guy. I, I met Esteban with, like, two more Spanish names I didn't write down because I'm lazy. Esteban Bravo. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, he... he there was, this was a good 212 division. I think in, in many ways, it was probably tougher than the open. So for this kid, he can't, he looked like he was like 25, 26 to, to do this well uh, as an unknown, you know, my hat, yeah. take my hat off to this kid. And Jason oh, Lowe, oh, go, go ahead. I was going to say, what about a 50 year old Derek Farnsworth? 51. Who is arguably the best he's ever been. Yeah. I, I, there's no argument. That's I've I've known that kid freaking 30 years. Yeah. This is 
by far the best I've ever seen him. And he's been getting the last couple of years, he's been getting a lot better. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. It really stri- is. He hit his stride after like age 45, basically. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure he's been training since he was like 14 or something or earlier. He's just unbelievable. He yeah. is is he's another one who's so smart when it comes to training and how to keep himself healthy and you know, no injuries and just continues to get better. Yeah. His passion and love for doing this are unquestionable. And it, I'm just so happy for him. So happy to see, you know, not only is he still competing, but improving. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And, you know, legs, are, they, they say the guy's over 50 or over 40. He had some of the best legs up there. I mean, he's always, yeah. had, he's always had, and he's kept his legs. And yeah. I don't think he, he squats like a million pounds anymore like he used to. Uh, I hope he doesn't. Anyway, <laughs> Maybe not a million, maybe 500,000. Well, okay. That's still a lot. Uh, so uh, I just want to mention one other guy in the 212. I was very impressed with Jason Lowe, who yep. used to be a classic competitor, classic physique. He's done a couple of these now. He was second to, was he second to Bo or was he? No, he was second to uh, George Peterson, I think. I'm mixing it. It was a show last year, but anyway, he's getting better and better. Very, very impressive physique. Real round, full look to him. And a uh, cool kid. Uh, yeah, he was second to Bo at the New York Pro last year. That's right. That's right. I knew he was second one, at one of those because everything yeah. was in Tampa. So I, in my George mind. won Tampa last year. Right. And yeah. Bo won New York and Jason was second to him. Jason's incredible. And he, and he paced, uh, placed really low. Um, and the what, what show was Chicago? Yeah, I think he was was eleven, ninth or 11th, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I was, was dumbfounded with that. But. He did make significant improvements since that since that show, mm. and and did move up. Um, where, where did he end up placing? Six, six, six yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's hard for me to look at that physique and think sixth place, but right. you know that's how competitive this is now. You know, um, you know, you know, what, you know what's really cool about him? He's he's IFBB Broku on Instagram. He's into all those old like. Uh, Dragon Ball Z and all that, all the anime stuff. And he hits yeah. a lot of these cool poses that are like basically from anime. Oh, really? That's like real heroic looking, not your standard poses. And it's, it's oh, cool. It's awesome. Yeah. He's, I always like seeing, cause he's got, he hits those shots like that Samir Banu would hit or fucking like, you know, Lee Labrada back in the day. Yeah. They, had, they all had like their own unique shots. So props to him. Uh, classic. I just want to mention the winner because 22 years old. Kid from Polish kid from Germany, Urs Kalachinski. Uh, man, he still has 10 pounds more to grow in, in the class, and he's already got some good size on him with a little tiny little waist. It's a vacuum, and it's 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 ridiculous. He's really good. Uh yeah, Steve Loris was my favorite going into this show. Um, condition was just a little off. I think if he had, I've said this before, if he had looked the way he did at the 2019 Arnold when George Peterson, the third beat him, uh, he would have walked away with this show. He looked so good at that show. Uh, wasn't that tight here. So that is all. Yeah. You didn't watch Classic, right? I, I didn't get to see much of it. I was really disappointed that um, that Steve Laureus didn't even, was he fifth, fourth? Fourth, yeah. Yeah, because I saw a few pitches leading up like the day before. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that's gonna be lights out, right? Like, craziest front double, um, and I don't know what happened. If he, you know, if you know, who knows with Instagram pictures, maybe he wasn't looking as good as I thought anyway. But you know, I, he, I, I see like structurally in shape, he's someone that could actually give it a go with Chris. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Something. You know, hundred percent, hundred percent. So I, I don't know what he's waiting for. You know, go get it, get right. get, do whatever it takes. Um, but that you know, I'm a fan of his physique. That's why I say that. He has the shape and proportions of. For many years, like when we started out competing, they gave out like cool sculpture trophies, like the Niels yeah. Anderson ones. And these guys, it was like it was like cartoon characters. Basically, the waist would be so tiny, the lats would yeah. flare out, the biceps would peek up like to the top of their heads. And we're like, yeah. well, that's so cool, but no human being could ever look like that. Steve's yeah, not he a, does. he's not a massive version of that, but he's he's got those proportions where you say, no, that can't be real. 
That that must be they must have photoshopped his waist out or something. Yeah, he's got the crazy quads, the crazy tiny waist, huge arms. Yep. You know, he he could definitely be a force. Yeah, just needs to bring it, man. Bring it 100 percent Yeah, please. Yeah, it, it drives you know, like it drives me crazy sometimes. There's been a lot of people over the years, and their their only real flaw was conditioning. They had amazing physiques. This is at the amateur level all the way to the pro level. And yeah. they just never dialed in. Some Edgar of them never even came near 90% ever. Yeah. Remember mm. Edgar Fletcher? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Mendenhall? Yeah, I didn't realize. Someone said Mendenhall, if he had ever showed up like really in shape, he would have won everything. But he never was. He never nailed it 100%. Right. There's a lot of those out there. Right. So who won, who won the bikini? Okay, so that was former Olympia champion Issa Pacini from That's Brazil. That's right. And you know what the, the crazy thing was is Facebook memories came up for me like the day before I flew out. And it was, it was uh, from the 2017 Tampa Pro. And she won that show four years ago. I think I never heard of her. She, she was probably 20 years old at the time or something. So what happened with Laura Lee? She won Chicago. Yeah. And then what happened? What do you think? What, what's your choice there? Just because, you know, I, I think bikini women shouldn't be like thinner. I think they should have some development, some meat on, it, some right? meat on their bones, something. And uh, Laura Lee has put some muscle on her the past couple of years, especially <laughs> the lower, lower body. Everyone's talking about you know, her, her thighs and her, her glutes have grown. Uh, I thought she looked fantastic. I, I would have had no problem with her winning this. So I, I've said it many times, though. I, I, I can't judge bikini because it's just my personal preference. And it's probably, yeah. I, I probably would fail on the test judging thing because my scores would be like way off everybody else's, I bet. Yeah, yeah. She looked good. And, you know, Jennifer Dory, third place. I had her. Well, I, actually, I actually thought she was probably going to beat Laura Lee. I thought that's how it was going to go. I thought it was going to be Dory and Chapados. But yeah. why was she closer to Isa? Like, like was she like she had more? Color? No, she had a little more meat on her too. Isa was, I would say, more slender, slenderly built than um, yeah. the rest of the top five. Beautiful, beautiful young lady, though. Beautiful, just yeah. stunning. And I think bikini, I'm pretty sure the face has to play a big role. Yeah. Um, because you don't you see mainly beautiful women competing. But you know who uh, who really surprised? If you look, Ron, oh, if you look at Issa, she probably has the most most perfect structure of any one of the girls, mm. as far as measurements from shoulders to waist right. to the hips. Like, like so yeah. sometimes she comes off as a little thin, mm. um, but structurally she's just insanity. Yeah, and that's what that what wins it for her. I mean, like, honestly, to me, the top four, I would have had, I, I couldn't have put them in order and felt like, okay, I did, I did it right. I did the right thing here. I, I would, I would be doubting myself because they were all yeah. so good. This, this runner up to Roger Hill, I never heard of her before, but first call out, they had her next to uh, Issa in the middle. I'm like, oh, I think this girl's going to be yeah. second. And sure yeah. enough. I mean, and she deserved it. What a, what a physique, what a face presentation. Yeah. Daraj mm. is very popular with the posing. She's got a pretty big posing uh, business. She, oh, okay. she, she does a lot of the online posing and stuff. She, that's she, how I've heard of her. I didn't she, even realize she was a top pro. I didn't, I I mean, is, do you recognize pro. that she's been the, like, the Olympia? Or, uh, I don't remember her from anything else. I'm not sure. I'm mm. not sure if she's been on the Olympia stage. But I know mm. she's very popular amongst the bikini girls. Yeah, I mean... I thought their, the presentation of all four, all top four, they could all be like, they could all probably go be full-time bikini posing coaches if they wanted to. Yeah. Assuming they could teach. Uh, but yeah. Hell of a class. So it was like, it was like the top five at the Olympia, as far as I was concerned. Cause they was all, the local, been... local guy, um, Andrew Berry. Didn't he do classic? Yeah, he did. He got, uh, one of, it might've been third call out. Yeah. That means this is first time in there, but I, Right. I see him belonging more in classic than as an open body. Uh, he would need another, I, I think just for classic to do better. I think 10, he's got very nice structure, very nice frame shape. He, yeah. just, he needs to fill out. 
Um, yeah. 10 more pounds. He, he's probably, I'm guessing he's probably under the limit. I hope he is because if he's fuller, I, I think he would get a better look. He just needs to fill out. And for open bodybuilding, yeah. he would need so much more size. I mean, he's got a big, he's a, what's he like six foot, six one? At least, yeah. Yeah, he's a, I've, I've met him. He's a, he's a tall guy. He's got a really big frame, wide clavicles, long limbs. It's a lot to fill out. So, yeah. yeah. I'd say 20, 30 pounds to, to really stand up there as a pro. Oh, yeah. In the open, in open bodybuilding. Yeah. But yeah, good for him. Man, uh, he, didn't, he he just, didn't he just turn pro, like, past few weeks? Yeah, at Masters Nationals. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Huh. From Vermont. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of New England, guys. If you didn't know, it's a, re- yeah, it's a region. Yeah, he's a good, good guy. Yeah. He was very close with John John Meadows, um, and uh, that's actually who I called right away uh, when people were calling me, and like I'm like I don't know, right? And and I called, and you know, unfortunately, he he had just yeah, but um, yeah, Andrew's great. There's a, there's a good whole um, crew of guys in New England now that are very active in, in the in the bodybuilding scene you know he very coaches nate spear oh okay who is pretty nasty yes yeah didn't nate did pretty well uh recently maybe it was last he's year he's been doing very well for yeah. a couple of years yeah he's been top three like three years in a row right just missing out on a pro card yeah he's he nails the condition like i said like he does. I appreciate. I know what it takes to look like that. And look, if, if you've ever gone through all that shit, you have so much respect for anyone that just nails it, dry glutes, hands, all that shit. Oh yeah, he so, always nails it. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, that does it. Um, you know, everybody, live every day like it's your last. You know, kiss everybody you love. Tell them you love them because nothing's guaranteed for any of us. I don't want to bum you guys out, but I think living with that in at least in the back of your mind makes you appreciate things a little bit more when you know it's not going to be forever not for any of us so yeah yeah. so uh all right guys thanks so much for watching remember the boston mass channel jose's got all kinds of cool videos with his buddy nate tello new pro training podcasts interviews gym tours all around uh go to the boston mass t-h-e-e boston mass on instagram and uh, the website, thebostonmass.com. We thank you guys for watching No Way Jose with Jose Raymond, and we'll see you next time.